Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What are some green flags early on in dating that the relationship should become serious? You go on a road trip together and still like each other at the end of it. Lost a girlfriend to this, she decided it was the perfect time to talk about some somewhat delicate relationship issues and I'm an easily stressed driver. Did not end well. Edit, maybe you n, fortunately we did not crash, but I may or may not have lost it a little and started yelling like a caveman while foaming at the mouth. Not my proudest moment. We're waiting. Absolutely. Traveling together in general is a great test of a relationship. My boyfriend and I have traveled internationally together three times now. Twice while dating and once before we got together. Packing, airports, cabs, foreign languages, etc. Being able to navigate all the potentially stressful aspects of traveling and still have a good time together is a huge green flag in my opinion. Yeah, it wasn't early in our relationship but I was a little anxious before my boyfriend and I embarked on a month-long trip abroad because I was worried being around him literally 24 sevenths would get on my nerves. Nope. It was a fantastic trip and his company was never irritating at all, even when we had to deal with typical travel stresses. That's one of the reasons I know he's a keeper. Long trips are a great test. The ability to apologize. If your partner never sees their faults, it'll never work. To tag on to this apologizing forward slash admitting they were wrong and then making the genuine effort to correct their poor behavior. If needed. Apologizing like it makes it okay to keep doing the crappy thing they were doing is a red flag. I would rephrase this as a willingness to apologize. My husband was never really taught how to make a proper apology. As weird as it sounds it is kind of a skill that can either be learned to do right or wrong. His weird apologies always made me feel worse. I quickly discovered he never really learned it because his whole family sucks at it. My husband was definitely willing to learn and adapt and to me that is the more important thing. Yep I learned as an adult that my parents suck at apologizing and are incredibly stubborn. It passed on to me and is something I've been working on. You genuinely enjoy one another's company during dull moments. Life's full of them and you are going to want a partner who you can enjoy them with. When my now wife and I were dating, we started having introvert dates where one of us would come over and we'd just craft or work on projects in the same room, sometimes talking, sometimes putting a show on in the background. It was so cozy and domestic, like we already lived together. My girlfriend and I did similar things in college. She'd text me and ask to come over to sit in bed with me on her computer while I played video games. We'd sit there for like three or four hours without speaking and then order a pizza and carry on. We still never talk sometimes. I think silence is underappreciated in relationships in general, not just in romantic relationships. There's an oceanic feeling when you're with a good friend just quietly taking in the whole world around you. Oceanic is such a good word to describe this. If they respond well when you are dealing with a crisis situation, or when you are seriously ill, or when your family member is seriously ill, they may be a keeper. In other words, how do they act forward slash interact with you during times of stress? Does their presence forward slash behavior help, do they make it worse, or do they make themselves scarce? When my relationship was brand new, my boyfriend came over late one night to relax after playing a show. It was storming forward slash down pouring outside and we were cracking open some whiskey. Suddenly, my cat started yowling as if he was in pain and making frequent, unsuccessful trips to the litter box. He has a history of kidney issues and I thought he may have had a stone lodged in his urinary tract a pretty emergent issue. I apologized and said I needed to run him to the animal hospital ASAP. Our cousin night in is over I'm so sorry, you can stay here if you want but I totally understand if you want to go home. My boyfriend didn't miss a beat, refused to leave our side and helped me get my cat into his carrier. I was really upset forward slash crying, my cat is elderly and the thought of him having an emergency procedure was so scary at the time. But he treated both of us so gently and was a huge source of comfort. He even took his asterisk over shirt off and covered up my cat's carrier so he wouldn't get rained on on the way to my car, getting soaked in the process and not acting like he was bothered or inconvenienced. I was completely taken aback and deeply touched this was the moment I began to fall seriously for him. It's been 3.5 years now and he continues to show deep compassion for people forward slash animals in need, and is so helpful, comforting and wonderful in dark forward slash stressful times. Also, my cat was absolutely fine the vet said he was just having an off day. 
a $400 off day. Cats. Edit, changed shirt to over shirt he wasn't topless at the emergency vet. A $400 off day. Cats. I know that feeling. It was very expensive for me to learn that my cat just likes to yell before and forward slash or after using the litter box. There's absolutely nothing wrong with him other than him being a fat idiot. Cat tax since this got a lot more attention than expected. This is super important. About a year into my relationship with my now ex-BF, I had a medical emergency and needed to be in the hospital. Once home, and still in a great deal of pain, he didn't offer to come over, help, nothing. I actually told him over the phone that I would really like his company, I live alone with my dog, and he said that it was too late to come over, it was 7pm, and that I should just go to sleep. Winner, there. I was dating a girl, and for my birthday she took me to a hotel so we could just pretend the shitty part of our lives didn't exist for the day. That night, she couldn't sleep because the bed messed with her hip, so she snuck down to the floor. When I woke up and realized where she was, I took the blankets and pillows down to her and slept there too. She thought it was really sweet, I mostly just didn't want her to do what I would have done, wake up not remembering I was not at home and scream like a child. Encouraging growth, but doesn't try to change your foundation. When you can talk forever about pretty much anything, and when something you have different opinions about becomes an interesting discussion rather than a fight. Important. If you cannot air out your problems, making necessary accommodations, and have different opinions, do not think it will magically change when in relationship. I actually know a girl who thought all of her and her boyfriend's problems would just magically disappear once they were married. Spoiler, they did not, in fact, disappear. Taking embarrassing shit in stride. This was pretty literal for me. Sorry, this is my second post. I used to have ulcerative colitis really severely which led to me shitting myself far more often than one should shit themselves in their early 2020s. When I first started seeing my husband, who has ASD, we'd drive from campus to my apartment, and I'd be like, white knuckle concentrating on not shitting myself in his car, run up the stairs, usually barely making it to the bathroom before he walked through the door. One night I didn't make it. I'm basically hiding in the bathroom and turn on the shower B forward slash C it's a gross mess. On the other side of the door, he's all why are you always so mad at me when we drive to your place? Did I say something? He'd been reading my try not to shit face as I'm angry. So I came clean and admitted I'd just shit myself, preparing for him to sort of back out slowly and end things as quickly as would be polite, this was within out first two months. His response instead. Oh. So you just shit yourself. Where are your jeans? In the garbage. That's silly. Jeans are expensive. The laundromat is locked for the night, but do you have a bucket or something? We can soak them overnight and wash them tomorrow. You're really not grossed out. Asterisk shrug asterisk. Not like you could help it. Just like talk to me. I thought you were mad. Tell me what's going on, you know. I had feared that exact scenario since I started having UC symptoms. And my future hubs just rolled with it. Years later, when I had my colectomy, he bathed me in the hospital. After that, when he had to have a circumcision at 25, I looked after his stitches forward slash changed his bandages several times a day and we laughed about how gross stuff was. He's seriously the best. There's a relationship I was in for quite some time with a girl who had crossed to the extent of having an ostomy bag. She was so hesitant to share with me, not even her closest friends knew except one. But alas something like that you can't keep secret forever from a partner you plan to be intimate with. She didn't want people to look at or treat her differently, to think she couldn't do things and I don't blame her in many ways. I had and still do have so much respect for that woman. It did change my opinion about her but in the sense I felt it made her shine more she was very strong and soft-hearted, caring, determined, and ambitious. I had historically always thought to myself, sadly that I didn't know how people could happily build lives with SOS who may have lifelong less than ideal situations like that. It really bothered me that I thought that too, and I'm sure in some ways she had the same fears of how will someone like me. After meeting her and getting to know her it kinda just became clear, it never felt like a burden, it never felt annoying, it honestly in many ways made me like her more because it was a testament to her character. It was just a part of life and life was still a-okay overall. 
Heck even while intimate things like the ostomy bag never stood out it was there sure but in my head it just wasn't something that mattered, I just saw her and she was beautiful regardless. It's unfortunate it didn't work out for other reasons, but I really value that relationship. She taught me so much about acceptance, better understanding the lack of knowledge we have of everyone else's world, and also about myself. Man typing this out I think I need to revisit those lessons. Edit, didn't expect this attention fixed two typos. I absolutely love this. You really can value a relationship even though it's ended. I still think fondly of my exes and am grateful for the lessons I learned from them. I hate that shows or movies often portray ex-relationships as scorched earth, rather than an experience that's run its course.